Okay, this has started Chrissy. And I see that we have 17 attendees here with us already. Oh, that's great. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming in. You won't be able to speak with us, unfortunately. I'm going to start uh, sharing my screen, I believe. And Chrissy, can you see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay, excellent. And I believe I can do the webcam as well. There we go. And that's visible. That into there we go. Other than, yeah. There we go. Welcome everyone to the webinar. Thanks for joining us. I'm just waiting for everyone else to come into the training session and be part of it. I see that we have 17 people who have joined now. This is something new that we're trying. We've never done a webinar like this before. It's a new program that we're attempting to use. So Chrissy and I will both be on here. And I don't know, Chrissy, are you visible yet? I'm expecting you to be on there too so people can see and say hi. There we go. <laughs> And there are a few different Hi, uh, <laughs> So this is a little bit different than the go-to meeting that we've used in the past. This is the go-to webinar. So I'm just going to share with you some of the rules uh, on how to participate and make the most out of this. So I'm just going to pull up this little bit of a box here so that you can see it. So on the right hand side of your screen, you're going to notice some icons that we're going to be using today. There's the logo for the GoToWebinar. There's also a microphone. And unfortunately, we are not able to unmute you in this webinar. So that might be something down the road that we might be able to do, but we aren't able to right now which is a disappointment a bit. But we're going to move on to the next part, and there is a little hand here. So if we do ask you to raise your hand or show, uh, show a number of hands, or if you don't know how else we're going to use that today, we probably won't use it very much. But the section you will be using are these two circles down below. There is a questions button. And if you want to enter a question in and type a question in, you can do that. And then if it's something that Chrissy is able to answer right away, she can either post the answer to you privately, or if it's something that everyone would benefit from, she can post the answer publicly, and then everyone will see in their questions section all of the questions and answers that have been given. So that's the question button, the little bubble with the question mark on it. The other thing that you'll see there is a handout button. And in the handout section, you'll be able to click on there. There is one handout for this session. We'll be using that at the very end of the program. I believe you can probably download it at any time and start to use it. And that's available to you. Down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see on the right hand side, there's a little red circle showing you that we are recording right now. There is an information button. And just to go back to that information about recording, yes, we are recording this. And it is my hope that we will be able to send you a copy of the recording afterwards. There's a question mark, or the, sorry, the little information icon. You can go into full screen mode if you want using the four arrows. And if you do need to leave the webinar at any time, there is an exit button down at the bottom. So as I mentioned, the icons that you're probably going to be able to use the most right now is the question icon. You can download the handout that we have for you at any time at the end of the session or at the beginning, either one, I believe it's okay. And that's basically the information I think that we need for us to get started. We have 22 people. We had 66 people who have signed up for this webinar today. And this being our first one, I think that's a pretty good number. So we're going to be covering a number of things. And I may just go back to this uh, in a little bit. But we will be covering these items that you see on the screen, which are the, the float art, the stretcher bars, and the floater frames. We're going to be covering all three of those topics today. So I don't know if we should be waiting a little bit more for people to start, but I'm thinking we've got a lot of information to cover and I'd like to get started. So yeah. I'm just going to go over here and also mention that an hour after the webinar today, you will be receiving an email with a link to the topics that we are covering today. So you'll see them all in there. 
okay, stack frames, the float space, the, the float mount, all of that. So that will be sent to you automatically after the session, one hour, and you'll receive that email, everyone who signed up for it. So that will be nice. So we're going to start with the very first thing that was on our list, and that is the float art. So the float art, when we're talking about that, this is, uh, people call it different things. Some people call it um, a shadow mat, some people call it a lift mat, and we'll go into some of those different terminologies. But this is basically what it is. It's art that has been lifted off of the, the the substrate that's behind it, and it appears to be floating on top of the mat board or the substrate that's back there. So that's what we're going to be putting into Frame Ready right now. And if we wanted to see a picture of this to see what it looks like, so here we go. This is the image of what the float art appears to be like. You can see that it's raised off the substrate or the, the backing mat that's there. And this one in particular, this is the first one we're going to be working with, does not have uh, another mat around the side of it. But we'll be doing both of those. So let's get started and go right into Frame Ready. And we're going to go down to, I'm looking at, this is Frame Ready 11.8. And everything that we're doing right now is available in Frame Ready 9, Frame Ready 10, Frame Ready 11. And if you don't see the version of Frame Ready down at the bottom center of your screen, then you are using Frame Ready 9 or Frame Ready 10. Okay, so we're going to go right back to the work orders. And I've prepped a few work orders to show all the things that we're going to be covering today. So the first thing that we're going to cover is the float mount art with no mat. And when we click on the work order, you can see that I've already put the art in, uh, sorry, the customer in, I've already entered in the art saying it's a card and that information. And I've moved down over here to the right hand side where we have the measurements. And I've decided that this is a small card that we are framing. And it's going to be a fairly vertical piece or uh, we could even say that it's going to be four by five. So it's a little bit more vertical rather than being square. Of course, the orientation icon appears in the middle. And I've also included a little sort of a digital image that we've got the art, it's floating on top, and we've got a mat behind it, and then the frame on the outside. So again, that's what we're going to be doing. No mat margins on this one, so we're going to ignore that. We're going to go right down to the white space, though. And we're going to use the white space to identify the space that's going to be in between the image and the outside measurement of the frame. So whatever that is, this is the space that appears all the way around the floated image, and that goes over to the outside edge of the in, inner side edge of the frame. So not the outside edge, but the inside edge of the frame. So there we are with the inside edge of the frame. So this is our inside frame measurements. We have over here a frame that I have selected. So we have our selection of the frame, but now we wanna add in those other elements. We are not going to enter in a mat. Even though there is a mat that the art is sitting on top of, there is no opening in this mat. So I do not want to enter the mat board into the mat section. Instead, I'm going to move down a little bit. I'm gonna to go to the mat design section first. And in there, I want to select that this is float art. And again, you can call it anything you want. Um, some people have float mount, uh, eight ply to a, a float mount, four ply, uh, for, uh, float mount with the measurements on it. So you can select anything that you want. You can have a charge that's associated with that, or you could decide not to have a charge that's associated with it. And when I talk about the different things that people call the float art or the float mount, these are some of them that you'll see. Um, you know, raised art, shadow mat, lifted art, all of those things can be entered in there. So again, the terminology is really up to you what you want to call it. So now that we've selected something to identify that the art is going to be lifted off of the mat, and it's just basically a design uh, item there telling the framer what the design is, we're going to go into the mount stretch field because I said we need to put the backing mat. This is the mat that is going to be used with no opening cut in it. And if I click in the field, I get a drop down list that you can see. I don't want to select any of those. I want to put in a mat board number. In order to do that, I click directly back into the field and I type in the mat board number and it will price out that mat board number the exact same as if I had entered it up here. 
So you're gonna see the price is exactly the same, all right? So I don't want this mat in here because there's no opening cut. There are no mats entered in here for the frame to cut an opening, framer to cut an opening into the mat. So we're just going to be using this as a backing mat. Now, if I still want to have the foam core behind that and I want to identify that, I'll use the underlined word mount stretch. And now I'm going to select the foam board that's going to be behind it. So I can go down to the foam board that I need select that and now I have the two entries of the mat board and the foam board that's behind it. You can see the total price 3272 and when I click done that total price is going to appear here under the mount stretch. There's also a little arrow that tells me that there is more than one item listed here and when I print out this work order it's also going to show both of those items listed on the work order. Uh, wire hanger that's going on the back, but this is important too, that under the extras, this is where I have my frame space listed. So that when I click on that, I may have some extra frame space, black frame space, clear the dimensions. You can have multiple openings in there, uh, multiple options for you for the frame space that you can select from. So simply select the one that you want and it will be priced out for you. And then again, we have our labor and assembly as a wood frame. So I've selected a wood fitting charge. And then under the, the glass, I've selected conservation clear. So this is my basic framing for the float mount art with no mat. Now I, I wanna go and do the exact same, very similar thing. I'm gonna go to the next work order that I have on my list. And this is gonna be the float mount at art with the mat in here. So in that case, I do want to identify the amount of mat board that I want to have appearing around the edge. In this case, then, if I wanted to have two inches of mat appearing around the edge, this space here still indicates the amount of air that's going to be between the cut opening of the mat board and the art itself. So if I look at a little diagram here, I'm going to have some mat board there. I'm gonna have some open space where the backing mat shows through, and I'm gonna have the art that's mounted, raised with, to create a shadow behind it, and then I have the frame on the outside. So that's what we're accomplishing. We've got our, in, our image, we've got the mat board amount, and we've got the space that's going to be between it, giving us the inside dimensions of the frame, which are going to be 12 by 12. Moving over to the left-hand side now, I have the mount, the frame that's listed here already, but I haven't shown the backing mat. So, sorry, the, the upper mat, the one that's going to have the opening cut into it. And I can select any mat that I want. I'm just gonna pick a different number than I had earlier. So here is the mat that's going to have the opening cut into it. And then if I go down to the mat design, again, I'm going to select that this is a float mount and how uh, float art, shadow art, like I said, people uh, can choose anything that they want in that list and how, what you want to call it is up to you. But I'm going to go down to the float stretch area again and now I'm going to select the field, clicking back into the field and typing in the map board that's going to be appearing behind the raised art that does not have the opening cut into it. Going underneath this by clicking on the mount stretch, I'm going to select that it's going to have some foam core behind it. Okay, I've made a different selection there. It's giving me the price of the two items combined. And when I click done, now it shows the combined price and the arrow is showing to show the extra items that are beneath it. Once again, I do have some frame space in there, a wood frame for fitting charge. And then I also have my conservation clear item in here as well for the glass. So this is with the mat, having the opening cut. The previous one, I'm gonna go back to that one, is the one without the opening of the mat cut into it. So those are the two ways that you can use Frame Ready to show the float mounted art, no mat opening, and the one that does have the mat opening, okay? And I don't know if there's any questions on that portion. Chrissy, do, do you see any questions coming up? 
We have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We do have a question. Um, what if you want to lift the outer mat, the one with the window? How do you indicate? Ah, okay. That's a great question. In which case, then I would go into the mount design uh, to indicate not only float art, but then you may want to have something in there that also says float art and mat. So I would add another one in. So float art, float art and mat. I know. Okay, it looks like um, I have another question or a hand up from Ellen Davidson. Okay. But I don't Ellen. see a question. Okay, Ellen, if you do have a question, you can type it into the question mm -hmm. box on the left hand side. And I'm just going to come back to my, my starter information here again, just to say that there is a question box on the right hand side that you can use to type in a question and then okay. Chrissy will let us know what they are. So, so she's asking how to add float art under mat design. Oh, excellent. Okay. So if we are uh, anything that you see listed here under these drop down lists on the work order, all of those are coming from the price codes file in the top left corner. And if you click on the price codes file, we want to go to mat design and you can take a look under the list view to see everything that is listed here currently. In order to add a new item, you can be in any screen that you want. The new button is in the top right hand corner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the new and I'm going to say that this is going to be listed under mat design. And when I click mat design, I get the option to enter in what I'm going to call this. So this is going to be called float art and mat. Okay. When I get down to the options for setting my pricing up, there, there may be a cost associated with this if you're going to be um, adding the calculating in the foam core that's going behind it or whatever the substrate is that you're using to raise the mat. Uh, you could put a cost in there if you want. You don't have to because you can still go over to the right hand side and select how you want to price this. And there are two elements that I would use in the pricing. There's the set price which gives you a flat rate amount, okay? And you can see that regardless of what the size is, it's gonna be the same price all the way along, okay? And then there's also the option to use a price per united inch. And if you use that, then it's going to give you a uh, dollar amount that's going to increase with the size of the piece. So if you wanna use those two of them combined together, then you can add in a set price and a minimum price, and that's going to give you the retail price that you're going to charge the customer. And if you decide that the prices in the larger sizes are getting up too high, and you don't want them to be that high, or that you want them to be higher, you're going to change the price per united inch, because that's going to have more of an effect on the larger sizes than it does on the smaller ones. If you want to raise or lower the price on the smaller sizes, you're going to use the set price because that will affect the smaller sizes more than it affects the larger sizes. Okay, so go ahead and use those two numbers, tweak them to get the amount that you want to charge for your float art and mat. Okay, and once you've entered that into the price codes file, now when I go back to the work order screen by clicking on the icon and I'm on the one with mat, I'm going to select float art and mat. So that's telling the framer on the printed instructions that this is what we're going to be doing and we're also going to have a, a different retail price that we're going to be charging for the raising of those two items. Great question. That's great. Um, so we have two more questions, I think, and then we'll move on. Um, we okay. have one from Catherine. Catherine says, so all this flow art is priced by the shop. Um, what is the going rate? That all depends. And it really makes a difference whether or not you are on the East Coast or the West Coast. If you are in the same city as someone, you could be in a high-end neighborhood with a lot of overhead that you need to accommodate, or you could be in a discount area right next to the discount stores. So you can't 
uh, charge as much as somebody else. I would say that when you're looking at the, the float and the art, make sure that you're covering the cost on the substrate that you're using underneath it. And if you're always using the same one, go back to the price codes file, take a look at your mounting. And if you are using uh, the, the foam core for that, take a look at your wholesale cost for the foam core. If this is empty, that's assuming that it's a 32 by 40. Knowing that it's you're not going to be using as much because you are going to have a little bit of a gap, you could put a, a slightly smaller fee into your float mount with mat and art. Um, if you decide that you you know you want to put something else on there for the labor, I would put that in again underneath the the uh, price per united inch when we go back to the mat design. Let's go back to the float art, sort them all out by clicking on the word item, and that sorts everything in the list so that I can find those items easily. The other thing that you might want to do is compare those prices. So you're taking a look at what you're going to be charging for the float art and mat, and then if you want to go back one record and say, what am I charging for just the mat? or just the art to be raised, okay? And then coming back and saying, what am I charging for the mat to be raised? In which case then I, I might want to increase that a little bit uh, when I'm doing the mat and the art. So it's really up to you what you want to charge for that. If you want, you can start a, a thread on the Frame Ready Framers page, Facebook page and have a discussion on asking people, so how much do you charge for this? And do a comparison there and get some ideas. Any other questions, Chrissy? Yeah, we do actually have a couple more questions, but because of the time, it's kind of important to keep moving along. So okay. um, maybe um, we could answer these after. Okay, or I think, you know, yeah, you're right. I suppose so. We've got about 20 minutes for each one. I will definitely yeah. answer those after. And I know that you have a poll there that we can run, Chrissy, if you want to run the first poll, this is one of the things that we can do in here. And maybe that's one of those things we'll ask next time is the, you know, prices and do a comparison that way. So here's our first poll. Okay. And once you have answered the poll, then the poll will no longer appear on your screen and we'll go right back to where we are. And this is just to get a feel for who's attending the classes and what sort of things should we be running. So uh, please go ahead and make a selection. Any selection that's accurate is good. Yeah, so I just wanted to point out again, Carol, that um, we are recording this and we can make it available to everybody afterward for anybody that joined in late. Right. Okay, good. All right. And then do you want to share the, the close the poll then, yep. Chrissy, and share the results? There we go. So this is the, the number of people that are attending the session and it looks like we have a lot of people who've been using Frame Ready for quite a while and some new people as well. So that's nice. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay, we'll hide the results and then we'll continue on. Right. All right, so the next thing that we're going to be taking a look at now, and I'm gonna go back to, let me go back to the work order here. We'll just go to the very next one that's on the list. And this is the stretchers. So stretchers are, have a wonderful, um, present a, a great challenge sometimes, but they also have a lot of opportunity with them. So we're going to start out with just taking a look at uh, a canvas piece that somebody brought in for you to stretch for them. So we've entered in the dimensions over here on the right hand side. Don't need any mat margins, don't need any white space. And then over here, you can select the stretcher that you want to put in there. And once you've selected the stretcher, it's automatically going to price it out. If you're having some difficulty locating the stretchers, one of the things that's really important about the stretchers is that they are in the group called extender. Now, a wood frame is gonna build outward, metal is outward, all these other options are building the frame vertically out uh, on a horizontal plane. However, the stretchers are going to 
extend the depth of the frame. And this would be the same as any of the Framerica shadow box series that they used to have. They would be called extenders as well. And so if I wanted to find all of the stretchers or strainers or extenders that are in here, I'm also going to say just the current ones. I don't need the discontinued ones. There we go. So here's a list of the extenders. If you find that you've located a stretcher bar that you want to use, and we can click on any one of these, we'll just go to this one for now, and you find that it is not in the extender bar, uh, it's not listed as an extender, then you can change that. By clicking on the underlined word frame one, you can go to the modify button on the left hand side and you can see that this one is called an extender but if it wasn't then what we would do is we would click on the modify button on the left hand side and it shows that this is the pink background it's actually modifying this in the price codes file and if this did say would and it was building the frame outward the same as a frame would do then you can change that right here to the word extender and it stays that way so that the next time someone else pulls up this stretcher bar, it's going to say the word extender in there and it will build it depth wise. It will not build it width wise. The nice thing, too, is that when you do the vendor update, it will not change this. OK, it will keep it as the extender. And I'm going to go to the price codes file and just click on find button and we'll do a find in here as well because if i was to search for anything that said stretcher i would expect it to be in the category of uh, the extender the difficulty that we have is that the suppliers don't always tell us that these are extenders they don't give us this column we add this column in afterwards so we're relying on that word in there and sometimes it's only s-t-r-t-c-h um, sometimes it's s-t-c-h uh, so we do our best to try and locate them but when you do a vendor update the only things that happen are that we look at the number here on the left hand side and the wholesale costs for length chop and join are updated it does not change the word extender. It does not change the size or the rabbit or anything else that you have added in here. So that's one of the things that is great about doing the vendor update. If at some point in time you do need to change everything uh, in here and the description and the barcode and all of the other things, you can still do that by pressing down the control key when you do a vendor update and it will write over top of any changes that you have made in here. So as long as you're not pressing down on that key when you do your update, your updates are only going to change the wholesale length, chop, and join costs. So that makes it uh, easy for you to change it to extender and it stays that way. So we have the stretcher bar in here and the next thing that we would want to do is go down to the, the mat design uh, sorry, the mount stretch field, and we have a wrap here. You can have as many as you want. If you want to call it canvas wrap, you can do that. In mine, I have it listed as just wrap, and they're all down here at the bottom. And this would be a wrap with the black edges on it. This would be a gallery wrap where the image goes around to the side, or it could be called a museum wrap. Uh, this is a mirror wrap where it reflects the image of the uh, picture onto the side of the stretcher bar, or it could have a white edges on it. So I find that if I putting the same word in front, all of these are in the same area and I can easily find which one I want rather than having it say gallery wrap, museum wrap, mirror wrap, white wrap, um, and they're all over the place in the list. So by keeping the words the same, they're all easy to select and you can choose which one you want quickly. Moving down to the, the fitting field, in the labor charge, I have canvas stretching. Now, some people also have that in the, camp, the mount stretch here. Whichever one makes the most sense to you is great. Go ahead and use that. But do remember that the fitting field is the only one that you can say, I do not want to discount my time. So that if you do give the customer a discount, then the labor that you're doing on stretching the canvas will not be discounted. OK, um, if you do decide that you want to put it in under the mount stretch, you can still select the gallery wrap. But then again, click on the underlined word to go here and select canvas stretch so that you can put both of those items in. 
And as I said, the prices are, are not geared to anyone in particular. This is just some prices that I have in here to play with right now. So if we have selected the canvas stretch, and we also want to put the labor and assembly on here as well, or the wood fitting charge, then I can click on the underlined word fitting. And in this box, I can select either labor and assembly or wood, whatever you call it. Um, I'll choose labor and assembly this time. There we go. And we've added that in. And once again, if I do decide to say that this is not going to be discounted, you'll see how it's going to appear differently now. In the top right-hand corner, all of the prices are combined into the unit price. However, if I click on options and I do give this customer a discount, okay, it shows me the discounted amount, but over here, it's also saying that the labor that I have is not going to be discounted. And that will appear separately on the work order and on the invoice. So when you invoice them, it will have to appear separately because they're going to notice that it says 10% of this amount, not 10% of this amount over here. Okay, so moving back over to the left-hand side of the screen, we have identified the type of wrap that we're doing. We've added the labor in for our canvas stretching. Now let's say that this is a customer who has brought in a piece that is already stretched. So you don't need to put the stretcher bar in. And let's say that we want to put a frame on there. In that case, then all we need to do is type in the frame number and it automatically frames it. But if you are doing the canvas stretching, and you also are going to put a frame on here. Let, let's take this out for a moment. So you could put the frame number on and first, or you can put the stretcher bar on first. It really doesn't make a difference, whichever one you want to put on there. So if we were going to put a, a stretcher bar on here, I'm just going to pick a number. There we go. So there's one that's in. I can move over now to the field on the left hand side. This is our stacked frames icon. And when we click on the stacked frames, I'm going to click on there. And on the left hand side, if I wanted to add in a liner, we're building out from the inside of the, the stretcher bar. And this is listed as an extender. So it's not going to increase the size of the frame. It's at 24 by 18 right now. And you can see that it's going to start building the frames outward so that if I decide that I want to put a liner in here, okay, we've got a liner in here, but it shows that the liner size is the same as the stretcher bar. So we're not increasing the size of the liner by the width of the stretcher, which is because we've selected it as an extender. And then if I do want to put a frame on here, um, let me just go with my standard here. There we go. So we put a frame on there. So now we have the stretcher bar, we have the liner, and we have the frame that have been added in. And when I click the done button, the total amount at the top of the screen is going to be brought over to the work order screen. And on the left hand side of the screen, you can see that there are three frames filled in now instead of just the one. So we have our stretcher, our liner, and our frame that we're using. So all three of those are in there. Next thing that I want to take a look at is if we wanted to put a, a strainer bar on the back. If this was a very long rectangular piece and you wanted to add uh, some support to it and you needed to add some support, uh, let's see, this is 18 inches wide. Let's say we're gonna make this a little bit longer, okay? So that we might want to put uh, some support into it. And if you were to, we've already got the strainer and this strainer is going around the circumference of it, but to add a strainer bar in that is only going to be 18 inches in height, I'm going to use the underlined word other down at the bottom of the screen, not the field, but the underlined word. And when I click on the underlined word, it takes me to a screen where I can add additional items. And this is great because I could add in um, different pieces of fillets to go around, special openings, but I'm gonna use this to put the liner in here, the strainer bar. So if I had a number that I wanted to put in here, there we go. 
and it's going to price this out. I need one of them. And the size that I'm going to use is 18 inches. So I only need one strainer bar. It's going to be 18 inches in length. It's pricing it out per foot and it's giving me a retail price for it. If I needed more than one at 18 inches, I can simply change the amount to be two and it will put two strainer bars in there. So depending on what I need, it will add it in. Um, if I wanted it to go into a, a certain category and price out separately on the invoice, I could do that. But in this case, I really wouldn't want to do that. I'm just going to click done. Okay, and it shows my strainer stock that's going to be added in there. When I click the done button again, it's added the price of that strainer uh, stock for the support into the retail price for the framed piece. So that's how you can add additional support based on whatever size you need, but you do need to tell it what the size is. Uh, and if you're going to do corners or something else, you, all you can do is go down to the bottom. All you need to do is go down to the bottom left corner, click on the other, and then you can add in as many as you need for the different dimensions that you want. Okay, so that is the stretchers with the, the liner and the frame for just doing the stretchers by themselves. Are there any questions, Chrissy, about working with the stretchers? Yeah, we have uh, one question, and then um, if we can move on from there, because we only have about 10 minutes left. Um, oh, okay. It just says, can you hide the non-discounted amount so client doesn't see in their invoice? The non-discounted amount, no. And the reason for that is because the math would be incorrect. So if it said on the invoice, and I'm just going to post this one to the invoice. Okay, it will post only. Okay, and I don't want to post all of those, so I'm just going to post the one with the stretchers right now. Continue. Okay, so you're going to see something that says labor on here and this amount. If if we didn't, if we allowed this amount to go into the subtotal up here, the client is going to expect the 10% to be on this amount as well, and then your math will be incorrect. If we didn't put the 10% on, but the two amounts were different and you could see that there is a discount, then they're not going to be able to see their savings. So it was one of those things that we had to decide if we are going to say you, the labor is not discounted, we have to show it separately. So unfortunately, that's okay. just the way for the math to be accurate. Okay, and another question, Chrissy? Um, we actually do have one more question. So oh. it just says, so that's how you'd add a fillet too? Yes, exactly. So if we were to go into, uh, let's go back down here. Bidding, bidding. There we are. And I'm going to go back one. Okay. So if I wanted to add a fillet in here, then I could click on that stacked frame icon. And I want that fillet to go in between the the liner, well, actually, let's go between the frame and the liner. So I'm going to click on the insert button and it's going to move the frame over to frame four. And then all I need to do is type in the molding number for the fillet. And now I have the strainer, the liner, the fillet, and the frame. Okay. If I decide I don't want it there, I can remove it. It's going to move everything back over and I can select where I want that fillet to be placed. Okay, so now strainer, fillet, liner, frame. Super. Yep, there we go. So I'm going to move on to, uh, did you want to do the next poll, Chrissy, quickly? Yeah, I'll move on and do the, the next poll. And did I have two polls in there? That's the results of the previous one. You know, maybe I only had one poll in there. No, it's there. I just clicked on oh. the wrong one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Like I said, we're new to this. This is our first time trying this. And I will want to get your feedback later to find out what you think about it. There, there we go. We go. <laughs> yeah. So what topic would you like to learn about next? Um, it, and this is one of those things, this is going to help us to plan these out. I'm hoping to have these bi-weekly. So every two weeks, we're going to have a training session that comes up. 
And uh, another poll might be to ask how long would you like these to be, you know, 30 minutes, uh, half an hour, uh, I mean, an hour, you know, 45 minutes. So, yeah, so please go ahead and vote on that. And then we're gonna move on to our, our last topic that we're covering. I'll just give it a couple more seconds and then we should be good. Okay. All right, I think I'm ready to close it. Do you think, Carol, we got 89% voted. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let's go ahead and close the poll and we're gonna take a look at it and see what everybody says. And we'll share the results. Oh, there we go, analyzing your pricing. That's a really good one. And we'll probably be breaking that down into separate pieces um, because there is a consultation that I do and I'd like to go through all of that uh, in little bits. We'll do that. Great, good to know. Okay, thank you so much, Chrissy. You can hide the results there. We're going to be taking a look now at the the floater frames and putting the floater frames in. These are really popular. And one of the things that I've noticed is how the, the sizing is entered in for the floater frames. And that's part of your handout that you're going to get, that we've got the floater frames, uh, whether the width is the top visible portion or the width is the full amount. And most times it is the full amount. So when we're trying to find uh, how to enter in the frames, when the molding companies have sent us the frame, it's the full lower portion of it. Uh, whereas with a regular frame, it's the top visible portion of it. And so this inside portion becomes the lip. So when we're talking about it, this will be the lip, that inside measurement. Moving down here again, so whether the, it's the frame lip, uh, sorry, the visible portion is the top little measure or the big bottom portion. So I think, and it's up to you how you wanna handle this, but let's go ahead and take a look at this work order. This work order here is we've got 22 by 28 for the size. Um, if we were to say that they've already had the uh, canvas stretched and it's come in that way, uh, I'm gonna go over to here and we would want to put into here the floater frame and had some numbers in there. Let me just put this one in. So this is a black floater frame. It's a two inch floater frame, but you can see that they've entered in the width of the frame as the full two inches. So this is where you have two choices on how you wanna do this. As I said, if you decide that you want to modify this and that the visible portion here is actually only uh, three quarters of an inch, okay, then we can change that right up here. However, if we decide that the visible portion is not three quarters of an inch, um, it's something less than that, and you want to leave that at two, then the other option is to change the lip so that if you want to have one and five eighths, uh, sorry, three eighths inch space on there, then you would change this to the lip size to be one and five eighths. Okay, and this is all in that, uh, the links that we're gonna be sending to you. So if it's two inches total, and the float space that you want in there's three eighths, then you would change this to be one and five eighths for the lip. Okay, and that would change the dimensions of it since it's a floater frame. And we don't have a, a graphic in here for the floater frame. But I'm gonna go back to this and say, let's decide that I am going to change this to be the visible portion, uh, that top portion that I'm seeing. Because if it is that way, then what I wanna do is I want to add in here the amount of space that I want to be able to see. So I'm gonna go and insert in here something that I've just called space. So how much space do I want? And if I want half an inch, then that's in there. If I want, um, a quarter of an inch, then that's what's going to be in there. And I can change the amount of space that I'm going to have visible between the art and the stretcher bar, sorry, the stretcher bar and the frame. So the space is that 
air, that gap. There are actually several, and if the if you are doing the stretching, then let's go ahead and insert the stretcher bar in as well. And we can just go find a stretcher bar here by selecting, if I type in stretch. There we go, nope, sorry, let me try that again. And if I just go to the extenders, that might be an easier way to do it and pull up a stretcher bar. There we go. So any of the stretcher bars that I want to put in there, then I've got the stretcher bar. I've got the amount of space that's going to be in between the stretcher bar and the floater frame. And the floater frame has three quarters of an inch that is actually visible on it. So that's one way of doing it. The other option, and I'm just going to duplicate this work order. OK, include Carl's name in there. There we go, because now I'm going to say that let's assume that the customer has brought in the piece already stretched so that you don't need to have the stretcher bar in there. So I'm going to take the stretcher bar out. It's going to move everything over. I'm going to take the space out for a moment too. Okay, all I have right now is the, the two inch floater frame that has three quarters of an inch that is visible on it. Okay, and the stretcher, the piece is already stretched. So I could use, if I wanted to, I could use the white space over here to identify that I want to have a half an inch or three eighths of an inch of the air in between the stretched canvas, we have the gap of the air, and then we have stretcher bar. Now I know some people have said, you know what, even if they have brought it in themselves, I would still want to be consistent in the way that it appears on the written work order so that when the framer is looking at it, they know exactly where to look each time and they have this space entered in here. Now the space, you can enter that in as a molding and it's going to have the group of wood and the most important thing on this is that it has a lip size of zero. So there is no lip on it, okay? It's just a, a piece of square. And that way you can change this to the whatever you want it to be for the space and reuse it and just keep changing it, okay? So on here, if I did have a piece that they brought in their own stretcher. I'm going to enter the space and then the stretcher bar, the floater frame. If they, you are doing the stretching, then I would put the stretcher bar in first, then the space, and then the floater frame. So that's the sequence that I would use with the, the floater frames to enter those in. As I mentioned before, somebody had asked, I know before, if you wanted to enter that in, you would go to the price codes file and you would click on new. And then under wood, you would select the, the name of it, um, space for floater, whatever you want to call it. Just remember, if you make it a really long name, then that's what you need to type on the, the work order. The lip size needs to be zero. The group is for wood, okay? And then you, if whatever the, the width is, if you have a standard amount that you use on almost all of your floater frames and you want to put that in there, then that's the amount that's going to show up each time until somebody changes it, okay? You do not have to have a, a cost associated with this. Just remember that when you open up your Frame Ready program, Frame Ready has a, a little security check in here. Each time you open your program, it checks markup integrity to make sure that you're not giving anything away for free. And if it finds something that you are giving away for free, you could click OK and it's going to try and find a default formula to apply to it. Otherwise, you could say, yeah, this is an item I know that doesn't matter. It's not going to have a price associated with it. If you want to try and make it as minimal as possible, uh, you, you could do something where you say it's, it's just going to be something really, really small, um, and it won't generate too much of a price for you. It still may be triggered as saying, hey, I think we're giving it away for free, but uh, there is something in that field at least. Okay, so those are the floater frames. Uh, Chrissy, are there any questions about the floater frames? Uh, 
Um, we do have a couple of questions. I don't know if this is going to time out on us or not. I don't think so. I think we're allowed to go. Uh, even though we've set it for 45 minutes, we can go a little bit over and that's okay. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I typically use the white space for our floats, but always confused as to exact size to order the frame, exact or standard allowance. Right, so the standard, uh, let's go to the, the frames up here. I'm gonna just go find all and go back to the ones where we had uh, a regular frame in them. And I think this was one of them. Okay, so when we're looking at the frames, and I, sorry if that isn't very large on your screen, but the allowance that we have in here is the 1 16th, and that's for a regular frame. So it assumes that the, the lip portion is a quarter of an inch, there's 3 16ths uh, that it's saying that we have, and then there's a, a quarter inch, sorry, a quarter inch, 1 16th inch allowance that's on there but for the floater frames and is it the floater frames that they're asking about Chrissy right so the floater frames are a little bit different because the floater frames and let me go back to that diagram here um, and we don't have right so if this is actually let me go back to the other well we can go through here um, if this is going to be the lip portion in here, uh, where the lip size is the amount. You know, I'm not really sure. I, I would say that probably you want to put in, if you're going to be using that lip portion, if you want to add the lip size in there, you can. Green Ready should not, I anticipate Green Ready should not add that allowance in there with the lip, but it may. I think what I want to do is test one of those out, test it out and check to see what the measurements are to make sure that it's correct. So if you want to give me a call, what we'll do is we'll go through two examples and double check to make sure that the size is coming out correct for you. And the other question, Chrissy? Yeah, so it says, if I enter the space as a wood molding in the price table, it requires a price, correct? Correct. Right. So if if we go back there and we're adding in the space, as I said, you can leave this blank. OK, but each time that you run, you open up the program and you check for markup integrity, it's going to flag this to say you're giving this away for free. And if that's OK, then then leave it that way. You don't have to worry about it. But if you want to, you could put a price in there. Um, I believe if it it's probably still going to come up if you're giving it away for free because I've said that it's zero, zero, zero. So it's only until you, you put it in as something that, you know, so it's a few cents. So now when I go to check the markup integrity, it's not going to appear on the list. It's going to say everything has a price. Everything is good. Okay. So it's nice to just check those things to say, hey, you're giving this away for free. Do you mean to? If you want to put a price in there, you can. Super. Okay. okay. So we just have one more, and it's actually not a question, it's a comment. Okay. And she's saying, thank you, Carol, for once again making my life less complicated. This has, has been exactly what I needed. Oh, that's so and nice. That's from, from Nancy Rollinson. Great. Oh, you're welcome, Nancy. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope I know this was a, probably a little bit bumpy on our first ride through, but I'm sure that we're going to get smoother and smoother at it as well. There will be the handout coming out to you in the email one hour after this, and there will also be a survey that you can fill out after this as well. So thank you, everyone, for joining us, and I will be closing the seminar. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.